hello YouTube! <laughs> Today in the Naughty Librarian I am bringing you like a very hectic book haul. They're all from library book sales so they're all just the most random books you've ever seen. <laughs> so basically I've been going to like a lot of library book sales lately because I'm trying to track down all of the out of print James Bond books because technically almost all of them are out of print, um, even the Ian Fleming ones. But like there was all these other ones written by like James Gardner and Raymond Benson in like the 80s and 90s and early 2000s that are just out of print. You can't get them anywhere. So the only place to get them is like library book sales, used bookstores, etc. So I have lucked out with James Gardner. <laughs> like I've gotten almost his entire run. So, so far, so good on that note. Anyway, let me just show you. So I got all of these James Gardner books. It's almost all of the books he wrote for the James Bond series, including this one, which is actually the first book he ever wrote in the series, License Renewed, and it's a first edition. <sighs> like this was a find book where I found it and I was like, <gasps> gasp, and I like, I reached and grabbed it so damn fast. So yes, this is the only hardcover I found from his run, but it's a first edition and I, I'm just so excited. It came out in the early 80s, I think. Yeah, this came out in 1981. So it's it's quite old and it's it's very much of the era because James Bond is like on a health kick in this. It's so weird, but like, I love it. And then I have all of these books in soft cover, like all of them. Like, I'm not going to go through all of them. They're just like assorted James Bond ones from the 80s. And I'm just excited to read them in general because I haven't read anything by James Gardner. The only problem is they are so out of print. Like they don't even have audiobooks, most of them. I think they did when they came out, but they were like, you know, like cassettes. <laughs> like it's from the 80s. So they haven't ever remastered them into like new audiobooks where you stream it. So um, yeah, I don't know when I'm gonna read them, but I've gotten most of them in soft cover. And like almost all of them are like in amazing condition. Like look at this one, the, the binding's not even broken. And this was originally printed in 1983, but this is the 1987 reprint of it. But like, it's not even cracked, girl. <laughs> like, so like, yeah, I really, I really lucked out on my, on my James Gardner fine. So I got almost all of his run. There we go. Library book sales, everybody. <laughs> and speaking of James Gardner, I also got The Secret Houses. So this isn't related at all to James Bond. It's a whole different world of international super spies. But like, I wanted to get it because it was just, it found a John Gardner book. They're so hard to find. They're all out of print. When did this one come out? This Because he wrote up into like the late 90s or mid to late 90s era. Okay, so this one came out in 1990. It is actually a first edition of it. First edition paperback that is. And yeah, so I think he ended his run like in the mid 90s, right around when Goldeneye came out. I think that was kind of like his last books. So yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> Maybe this is just an exciting thing for me, but you know what? I'm sharing it anyway. <laughs> you know what? Speaking of international super spies, I also got all these copies of the Born Identity series because I just, I haven't ever read them. I love the movies. Like, I am such a sucker for action movies. Here's the thing about me, guys. I don't like films. I want to watch movies. And I love action movies. The cheesier, the better. That is my favorite thing in the world, is watching shitty action movies. <laughs> and, the, and the Born Identity series are actually good action movies, but they're action movies. So um, yeah, I had never read them, and I found copies of them, and they're actually like really cool old edition copies. So I have like, look at this, like look at it, it's so pretty. <sighs> okay, so this originally came out like much earlier than I thought it did. It came out originally in like in, 1980. So like, it's very old. This was a reprint from 1988. And I really love the cover. Um, it's in really super good condition considering it's from 1988. It's super old and um, love. And I also got um, the board ultimatum kind of the same cover, like vibe. And I don't really care about covers in general or like book sizes because I am a chaos human. But like, I got really excited that it, the first and the third book were like the same pattern. However, like it's kind of nails on a chalkboard, but I'm trying to pretend it's not. <laughs> Born Supremacy, book two of the series, is the stupid movie tie-in edition and it hurts my soul because I hate 
movie tie-in editions. I just, I just don't like them. At least it's not like so heavily a movie tie-in edition that like it's bothersome. It's kind of a little bit more subdued. But um, yeah, so I just, I got the whole series, the whole trilogy. There might be more books in it. I don't know, but I got the whole original trilogy. So I mean, I'm kind of excited to read these. Maybe I'll do like a born series read through. I don't know. Let me know if you guys are into that because I'm kind of vibing with it right now. I think it'd be fun to do. This whole book haul is just chaos. Like I feel so bizarre. Like I had, like I had too much sugar and coffee today. <laughs> like <laughs> I feel like I'm just so frantic. Anyway, let's keep going. So again, library book sales. I got all these classics and some of them were fines. So first things first, I got this copy of And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I am excited to read more Agatha Christie because I've read a couple and I have enjoyed them. And also they're fairly short, which is nice. And I've just looked at this for the first time and the words on each page are like enormous. <laughs> they're like big enough to be like um, children's chapter book size. Oh my gosh, I've got these, they're just enormous size words. Sorry, I have... I am so ADHD today, but anyway, and then there were none by Agatha Christie. I am excited to read this. I've read a couple by her and enjoyed them. Like, are they problematic? Yeah, there's a big yikes factor in her books, but they're still good mysteries. So maybe I'll do this for Drunk Classics when it comes back. Pretty excited about that one. And look at this other cool, like, classic I picked up. This is Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. And it's this glorious cover. Like, look at the old Bloomsbury logo in it. I love it. It's very fragile a little bit, but um, when was this reprinted? Let me see. So this was printed in 1951. Like, this is this is an old edition of it, but um, I love it. I think it's so pretty, and I got it at a library book sale. I'm obsessed. Now this next one is my find because it actually has a dust jacket, like a cardboard dust jacket for this chonker of a book. And look at the cover, it's so gorgeous. And this is like a beautiful hardcover, huge edition of The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. I have been wanting to get a copy of this for so long. <laughs> like I could never find one that was affordable. And I got this at a library book sale where the sale was Here's a bag, as many books as you can shove in it. The whole bag is $5. And you, and like, I shoved all of these books in that bag, damn it. <laughs> so um, this was practically free. And it is so gloriously beautiful, this edition. Let me see when it was like printed. Like it even has art in it. Oh my gosh, look at the cover page and the art, it's so cool. Okay, so this edition was printed in 1964. Ah, it's so gorgeous. And it had like this hard, this hard cardboard slip cover to protect it. And I was like, oh, this is a find. I don't think they know what they have. Like it's in really good condition too. <laughs> so this was a total find, obsessed. And this is just my last little group of like miscellaneous things. <laughs> so we'll go through that. So first things first, I happened to just come across a copy of Death Comes to Pemberley by P.D. James. And I picked this up because one of my patrons and subscribers was reading this book and telling me how good it was. And I happened to see it at a library book sale. So I was like, okay, it's an omen. I should read this. And it has a step back, but it's not really a cool one. It's just like, hey, there's a nice field. <laughs> so this one is kind of, um, you know, obviously an unofficial sequel to Pride and Prejudice, but we're following Elizabeth and Darcy. They've been married for a few years now. Um, they're gonna be throwing this big ball. And then, you know, Lizzie's uh, idiot sister, Lydia, who's been banned from the house because she, you know, eloped with Wickham who's like a scumbag they've been banned they're not allowed at the ball but like Lydia shows up hysterical saying Wickham's been murdered so now it's a murder mystery but like honestly it's Wickham like <laughs> he probably deserved this murder like let's be real but um I had a subscriber reading this and I saw it at a library book sale and I was like it's time I need to read this too speaking of like historical romance I also got a Pleasure for Pleasure by Eloisa James. And I've been kind of going through like an Eloisa James renaissance at the moment. And look at that clinch step back. Oh, it's muddy tab. I love it. I love a good clinchy one. Like she doesn't even have a top on. Her dress is as around her waist. So we're basically following this girl's 
Josephine and she is um, very rebellious and she has, you know, kind of always been like this outcast in like the con. And so she's like, well, if I'm already an outcast, I might as well enjoy myself. So she's kind of wild. And she goes out behind the stables one day to like steal a kiss with like unknown Raquel and uh, gets caught. And no one's around to really protect this girl. Like our chaperone is just always off somewhere else. Her guardian's on their honeymoon and like no one's around to like do anything about it. And she doesn't really want to marry this guy, but like society's kind of forcing them together. And she's like, well, like maybe it's not so bad. And like, I don't know, I was gonna go. But yes, I am in an Eloisa James Renaissance at the moment, so. I picked this up because I happened to find it. So one more romance I picked up was Can't Let Go by Gina Showalter. I read this years ago, but don't own a copy. And this series, um, the original Heartbreakers, is kind of like small town romance, but also like um, angsty and very smutty. Very, very smutty stuff. This is like old Gina Showalter because I feel like there's a definite divide with Gina Showalter books. Like the old ones are like really smutty and fun and then the newer ones less smutty and fun. There's just like a, a definite divide. This is like old Gina Showalter where you're like, oh, this is smutty and fun. <laughs> and I also picked up this really random copy of Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. I still haven't read Good Omens and this was like such a weird little paperback edition and the cover is so odd looking. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just kind of grabbed it because it was basically free. And it's so old. Like, oh, look at that yellowing of the page. Yikes. It's so old. When was this printed? <laughs> okay, so this was printed in 1996. Like, it's not when it was released originally, but 1996 printing. I've gotten books from the 80s in better condition. Whatever. It was free. And I haven't read it yet. And, you know, there's a TV show about this. An angel and a demon need a team up to stop the Antichrist from destroying the world. <laughs> That's basically the plot. And um, funny things happen. <laughs> That's all I really know and I didn't already own a copy so now I have one even though it is like really beat up but like whatever I enjoy it. It's not that beat up it's just kind of old but like it has the bindings not even broken so like I think it's a find. And last up I got this book just because I thought it was funny. So this is The Werewolf Chronicles by Tracy Breary. And um, just the first line in it is so funny. It says, I werewolf. <laughs> so here's the blurb. They say Los Angeles is the city of angels. It's also the city of werewolves. <laughs> I should know I'm one of them. My name is Phyllis. Until recently, I was a dancer waiting for my big break. Then I took a trip to Wisconsin for some sorely needed R&R &R and was attacked in the middle of the night by a vicious creature! Exclamation <laughs> point. It seems that no place is safe nowadays. Becoming a werewolf is the last thing I needed. I've tried controlling the savage beast in me, but it isn't easy, especially when the moon is full. And now I've got a murder rap hanging over me. And you think you've got problems? It's so ridiculous. <laughs> and I was like, I am obsessed just because it's so silly that like I wanted to read it. Also, it's LA. It's just so silly. <laughs> I just saw it and I was like, I need to own this. It's basically free. It's going in the bag. <laughs> all right. So those are all my library book sale finds. I'm sorry. I'm such a chaos human right now. I've just... I'm just very ADHD and it's hard to focus and I've had so much sugar today and it's like a problem. <laughs> Thank you for staying with me on this very bizarre journey. So on that note, if you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, <laughs> make sure you subscribe. <laughs> and if you want cool exclusive content, including a book club and early access to videos, you can consider becoming a channel member or a patron. The links for that are in the description down below. And on that note, I will see you guys soon. Bye!